Peace be with you. I am Bruce Wozniak. This is Catholic Sports Radio, located at the intersection of your faith life and sports life, and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and lots and lots of other platforms. Thanks so much for joining me for this and hopefully many other episodes. The show website is catholicsportsradio.net. You can listen there, but there are also links there to hear the show on all kinds of podcast listening apps. Are you following Catholic Sports Radio on social media yet? I would really love to see more folks engaged that way. There are links on the website to Catholic Sports Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There is also a Facebook group, which is called Catholic Sports Radio Community. You can put prayer requests in there, get to talk with other folks. There are listeners of this show in that group, as well as some former guests. There is a button for that, too, on catholicsportsradio.net. A lot of times I will post pictures in that Facebook group that guests send to me that I don't post anywhere else. Do please help me spread the word about this show. Tell others who would enjoy and benefit from listening about Catholic Sports Radio. And I've mentioned in the past Merchantside Marketing Group as the company that built that website. I have not mentioned this at all before on this show, but I recently launched a course, an online course called interviewtipscourse.com. And it's a very simple website, and it's where I'm selling something that people who get interviewed a lot would benefit from learning through that online class. My point being that Merchantside Marketing Group built that website for me also. Very functional, very responsive on mobile, and so it just shows you the diversity of the different types of websites that they build. Obviously, CatholicSportsRadio.net has an awful, awful lot to it. And if you look at interviewtipscourse.com, it's a very simple one-page website, so it shows the depth of the work that they do. So I encourage you to contact them for any needs that you might have. They have different ads on catholicsportsradio.net that you can click through to get in touch with them. And of course, as I always say, do mention that you heard about them on Catholic Sports Radio. Now on to my ministry moment for this episode I'm going to do my best to try to keep this anonymous, but it bothered me recently when I was listening to a sports talk show on the radio, and the host was talking about a retired pro athlete who had made statements on social media about a certain situation, voiced their opinion about it. The radio show host went on to say, nobody cares what so-and-so has to say. That's not good sportsmanship, and it's disrespectful to another human being. It's not Christian-like behavior that any of us should participate in. If you find yourself growing bitter and critical, I urge you to remember a passage from the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 tells us, If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. Friends, remember, even if you disagree with an athlete, a coach, or some other person in sports, we still need to lead with love and respect as sons and daughters of God and as ambassadors of the Catholic faith. Moving on now with this week's episode, my guest is the Director of Cross Country, Track, and Field at Manhattan College in New York. In July 2016, she had been named coach of Manhattan's men's and women's cross-country, mid-distance, and distance programs. An elite-level professional runner, she represented the United States in the 1,500 meters at the 2015 IAAF World Championships. She had finished third in the 1,500 at the USATF Outdoor Championships to qualify for the World Championships in Beijing, China, among other international competition. In her days as a student athlete, she set six school records and won four Atlantic 10 titles competing for Fordham University and was named to their Hall of Fame class of 2017. Welcome to Catholic Sports Radio, Carrie Gallagher. Hi, Bruce. Thanks so much for having me. And hi, listeners. I look forward to this conversation. Thank you, Carrie. Great to have you here. And it's not uncommon for me to have a guest on this show who comes from a big family, and you are definitely one of those people. (laughs) Share with the audience about the huge, obviously Catholic, family that you come from. Yeah, I am. So I'm the third of nine. I'm the oldest girl um, and um, my family. We started in Brooklyn, uh, moved to Queens when I was seven, and uh, I guess we're kind of your stereotypical Irish-American Catholic family. (laughs) Um, Very, very close-knit. 
um, and and our faith was definitely central to my experience growing up. Um, you know, we were praying regularly as a family. We were going to Mass on Sundays and on Holy Days, and um, the family unit was really, really strong. So I was very blessed to, um, yeah, have such a, a great family uh, support system. I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you know off the top of your head what the age difference is from the oldest to the youngest of the nine of you? Yeah, it's 17 years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So listeners, that paints a good picture for you of the foundation that Carrie comes from, the Catholic foundation, the family life that she came from. Carrie, on your Twitter profile, your bio references a Bible passage from Matthew. Share with the audience what that is and why it obviously speaks to you. Yeah, Bruce, the uh, that's actually Matthew twenty eight twenty, and I, I put that in my Twitter bio pretty recently, um, just because I, you know, given what was go- what's going on for me at work, what's going on for me personally, um, I am with you always. That was just a very succinct truth that I think was is is currently just speaking to me and I um it's just kind of grounding me uh in in relationship with Jesus right now and so um you know I've I've had different you know scriptures and various things kind of speak to me but that for this season of my life is um very present and for the audience I think it's a good example of something very simple that you can do as an outward sign of your faith. I think sometimes, especially with Catholic Sports Radio, there is this undue pressure of thinking of something grand that you can do to show your faith, somehow maybe mix it with sports, but I think it's something as simple as Carrie saying, that's a particular passage that speaks to me. I'm going to put it on my Twitter bio. She's in the public eye, so to speak. She's a coach at a college that people might be looking her up online, and to see that is somewhat courageous, bold, might be an overstatement, but still something simple that we all can do. And if you have a particular passage that you're fond of, or Carrie just mentioned she recently switched it to that one, so obviously from another, mix it up from time to time and be proud of your Catholic faith and show it off on something like Twitter like she's doing. Carrie, based on all your accomplishments that I read off in the intro, it would almost seem as though you likely have been running competitively since a young age. Is that accurate? Yes, I started running sophomore year of high school. Um, I was always an athlete and active my entire life growing up. It was, so in some sense, I guess I was a little late to the sport in that I only started you know, my second year of high school. But uh, from that point, uh, pretty much until now, <laughs> it's been a big part of my life. So had you been competing in other sports, and regardless of the answer, what interested you in your sophomore year of high school that you did get into running competitively? Yeah, I, I think I was, um, like most young you know, young people, dabbled in sports at, at a young age. And so the CYO, I, you know, I, I did pretty much every CYO sport that was available, uh, played basketball, <laughs> played soccer. I did a little bit of swimming, was not very good at that. <laughs> a little bit of Little League softball. Wow. Um, and so when I got to high school, I actually had intended to try out for soccer, but the uh, tryout was the first day of high school, and I was very, very shy, so uh, I didn't go. <laughs> so I ended up trying out for basketball, and um, I made the team, but I didn't play very much. Um, and so an entire year of basically sitting on the bench. My mom would drive me to practice, would drive me to games because I was too shy to ask for a ride. And so she saw that. She saw me on the sideline. And um, it was actually my mom who suggested that I try cross country my sophomore year. And so that's um, where I got my start. I I said, all right, mom, I don't think I'm going to like it, but I'll try. And uh, I instantly fell in love with it. So that's kind of what got me started. (laughs) Mom knows best. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Always, every time. <laughs> Am I to understand that you only attended Catholic schools? Yes, that was actually something that I'm, I look back and I'm extremely grateful for, but that was a priority for my parents to put all nine of us through Catholic school, um, grade school and high school. Um, at, col- at the college level, it was, it was our choice, um, but I did decide to attend Fordham University, which is a Jesuit university. Um, so K through, you know, 
bachelor's. I uh, I was in Catholic school. So even I can't imagine that you went to a school that was K through twelve. So for K through twelve, you went to probably at least two different Catholic schools. It sounds like. Well, I went to two because we actually moved. So I was born in Brooklyn. Um, where I went to Mary Queen of Heaven, and then I moved in at the end of second grade. So I started third grade at St. Francis de Sales in in Rockaway in Queens, and uh, was there from third through eighth grade. Okay, okay. So then growing up, was your Catholic faith prevalent throughout all facets of your life? You know, I think I I thought it was. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was, but as, as I matured and kind of, you know, understood, you know, I'm learning you know, still always, uh, just, you know, how many different facets of our lives there really are. Um, it was not in every part of my life. Uh, I had a really strong foundation in my family, um, of prayer, of worship. Um, but it was very much an individual experience, like within the family context. I don't know that I really, um, engaged with it outside of kind of in some sense, checking boxes and doing what I thought um, was enough. (laughs) So in terms of relationship and and kind of a personal encounter, uh, it it wasn't until I was much older that I really experienced that. So um, I think, you know, God knows. He knows us better than anybody ever could, better than we know ourselves. And so I think, you know, I he allowed me to see things and understand things in my time. Um, So yeah, I kind of had this, in some sense, double life. I had my, you know, Catholic life that had its place. And then, you know, my social life was different. (laughs) So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of was my early experience of, um, of my faith. Understood. Understood. And in her adult life, Carrie actually went through what she considers a conversion experience. That's all I'm going to say, because I'd rather you hear it in her own words. But before I have Carrie share that story with us, I do want to mention something that I had to deal with off the air recently, something that very much has to do with this Catholic Sports Radio ministry. It happened on a Saturday and had to do with the website in terms of updates that were done to some of the plugins. And something in that process actually caused the website to go down altogether And as you can imagine, it's not easy to get someone who does that kind of work to be easy to reach on a Saturday. It unfortunately carried over into Sunday, and I had tickets to the Tampa Bay Rays baseball game that day. So there I sat in my seat at Tropicana Field while the game was going on, texting back and forth with someone who was finally able to dig in and do some troubleshooting and then work towards getting the site back online, which of course is always a concern, period, but especially on a Sunday when a new episode is about to be released early the next morning. I say all this to tell you that it ended up costing me $110 for all the work that got done that day to fix the issue and get the website back online. That's a tough pill for me to swallow in that I am open about the fact that I don't get any income from doing this show and don't have any sponsors, which means that all the expenses, including that recent $110, has to come out of my pocket. So I do ask you to prayerfully consider supporting this ministry through a financial contribution. If you have been listening for a while, thank you. And you have heard me mention listeners and guests who have contributed to Catholic Sports Radio. And you've heard me say that there are two ways that you can do so. On catholicsportsradio.net, there is a Donate to CSR button that allows you to contribute securely online in whatever amount you wish. There's no drop-down menu of amounts to choose from. You put in whatever you're comfortable giving as a one-time contribution. Alternatively, as some folks have opted to do, instead you can get in touch with me through the contact section of the website to ask for the mailing address, and I will personally write you back with the details on where you can send a check. I'm happy to say your name on the air if you wish, or you can choose to keep it anonymous, as some have directed me to do when you do contribute, either online or by sending a check. I'm very grateful to everyone who listens to this show and would most appreciate your considering Catholic Sports Radio as part of your tithing as I continue working to use this ministry to bring more people closer to Christ. Carrie, let's hear that story that you have about what you consider to be a conversion experience. Yeah, so I was actually, um, 
without, you know, too much detail, because I think it's a pretty common experience. Obviously, it was my own unique, um, the details are unique to me. But, um, you know, I had been in a relationship and it ended rather abruptly and it was a little bit jarring for me, that experience. And uh, I was 20, I had just turned, I was 29, actually. I, I was 29, I was about to turn 30. And so, um you know, I had seen my life going in a certain direction. And so when that ended quickly, um, I just found myself struggling. Um, in a way, you know, I had, I'd had out of the breakups in my life before. <laughs> it wasn't um, the first time. But something about this one was just, uh, was just different. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I felt the only way I could really describe it was I, I just kind of felt bottomed out. I felt like I, I didn't know where to turn. Um, and I had actually recently at that time started volunteering with the Sisters of Life um, in New York City. And one of the sisters that I had been working with, um, I just, you know, took the opportunity to talk to her a little bit about it. And she's made some really helpful suggestions to me um, about how to kind of manage what I was experiencing. And one of them was to you know, pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament to go into a church and just sit in front of the tabernacle. Um, and the reason I call it a conversion, because it's not, I didn't leave the faith. Um, I grew up in the faith. So, I, you know, I, I was already Catholic. Nothing had changed in that regard. I was practicing. I was doing everything I was, quote unquote, supposed to do. Sure. Um, but this was the first time that I approached Jesus in complete need without a, a, solu- a predetermined solution, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and so that was probably the best suggestion that she could have made because um, that's what I did. I didn't know what else to do. I just went and I sat and my my prayer was just to, to sit there um, in pain and um, wondering why, what, what was happening, what was next. Um, and in some sense, the details ver- were, you know, externally were not very dramatic, but for internally, everything, everything was, was um, changing. Mm. And so I think that was the first time I was open to a relationship with Jesus where it was two ways now. It wasn't just him inviting and me blocking. <laughs> um, you know, there was just this um, really beautiful experience of, of him caring for me in that, in that need, in that space. And, um, yeah, my prayer life completely changed and my approach to my faith completely changed from that point on. And I see it so much more as a seeking and a growing and a learning and, um, a relationship. Uh, whereas before it was just kind of an aspect of my life that was important because it was supposed to be important. So that's, yeah, that was, that was kind of, I can only call it a conversion because it was a point in time where everything changed. Well, and the key that I heard in there, as you told that, is I really picked up on when you said that you went before him and in my words, you had no agenda. In other words, you said you didn't have a solution in mind because I think that's what happens is we go to him and we pray and we ask him to move in whatever our situation is, but we kind of say, this is the way I think it should go or the way I'd like it to go. And so you were in complete surrender and made yourself vulnerable so that he could move in you. And like you said, it didn't result in something dramatic that everybody around you just, what has come over you, Carrie, but you felt it inside you and you knew that change had taken place. Yeah, that's exactly right. The Manhattan College website makes a clear distinction about your now being the director of cross-country track and field. On the sport side, I think we would all like to know what that is different from, quote-unquote, just being the head coach. But on the faith side, I'm also curious as to if it affords you more opportunity to sit one-on-one with a student-athlete and maybe minister to them in some way, or is it actually less in terms of opportunities to do that as compared to wearing the coaching hat? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. And I actually was named director in July. So, you know, I think some of that's going to unfold. You know, what are those ways? Uh, how is that personal encounter going to happen? Because it it will continue. That's too much a part of, um, you know, what athletics is about, in my opinion, is that opportunity for personal encounter. But um, 
I did move from a specific event group coaching position to uh, a bigger picture position. So for anyone who's not familiar with track and field and cross country, um, there's different event groups. So you have your distance runners, you have middle distance runners, sprinters, jumpers, throwers, um, and these are all very different disciplines. The training happens very differently and even there's kind of subcultures within each area. Mm. Um, and so the way that the athletes interact with each other can be very, very different. So mm. um, when I first came to Manhattan as the head coach for cross country, middle distance and distance, I was tasked with managing a specific event group. Um, but now as director, I still have, that's still my job is to directly coach that group. So that uh, remains okay. the same, but I have this added responsibility of overseeing the entire program and looking for ways to unify us and make sure that we're, you know, moving as a unit while still, you know, getting the most out of the unique opportunities that come within each event group. So on the faith side of things, you know, I was, I, I really, um, am looking forward to this opportunity to be more involved with the program as a whole. And I really tried to do that even as, as the head coach for cross country to make sure I was accessible and available to the throwers and the jumpers and the sprinters. And I think that they felt that. Um, but now this is an opportunity where, you know, I have um, a role that directly impacts them. Mm. Um, and so in some ways I have more access and, but not, not direct because I'm not their day to day coach. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, how that does play out. But um, what I am looking forward to is even just setting a direction for the program um, that's going to be consistent across the board, across the event groups. Um, that's going to be based in, you know, certain values. So, you know, we're coaching mm. the person and all of my coaching staff, my assistant coaches, um, they really live that in, in their coaching, whether they know it or not. You know, I would, I, I can't speak to, to even their, you know, faith, um, background or experience that doesn't come up very explicitly often, but sure. I see the way that they interact and that's important, you know, that we kind of foster that person first results will come with kind of approach to, um, to performance and to athletics. I wonder, was there a certain point in your athletic career where maybe you realized, hey, running is a great time of solitude when I can pray, either formally or just in conversation with God, or am I way off the mark? And it's, sorry, Bruce, but in the heat of competition, it's all about the race you're in, where your closest pursuer is, your technique, and so on. <laughs> it's actually a wonderful question, Bruce. And I think um, as I look back, hindsight tells me that there was a very prayerful approach to a lot of what I was doing. Uh, I just didn't necessarily have the awareness of it. I think that God has worked really beautifully in my life in this way where I developed certain, um, I don't know if skills is the right word, but but kind of translatable skills, for lack of a better term, uh, to the spiritual life. So there was a lot happening that I was unaware of. But I think that's how God works a lot of the times in our lives anyway. You know, I think we're called to the moment that we're in and to give the best that we can to what's in front of us. Um, and we have the faith and the, the knowledge that God is using it for his good. If our, if our intention is to be in his, in line with his will. So, you know, probably most of my life training wasn't directly a, um, a prayer, you know, a prayerful experience. But there were times I remember some workouts, especially hard workouts. I'd be in the middle of an yeah, in the rest between intervals and saying Hail Marys because mm. I, I was needing to get through that workout. Um, I remember some long runs where you know life was hard, you know things were going on around me, and and that was just a good time um, to be out of the noise because uh, I didn't listen to music. Sometimes I would run with people, but sometimes I ran solo. When I was solo, I was out of the noise and I was just very in tune with my body. So even if I wasn't intentionally speaking to God, I think, um, you know, he lives within us. So I think, you know, that was a an encounter with him that uh, I didn't even need to know I was having. <laughs> so I think I can look back and see, you know, that prayer and relationship with God was very much interwoven in my athletic experience. But in those moments, I was pretty much eyes on the prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, I'm I'm including myself audience, how many of us 
have that happen regularly, right? Where we look back at something and it's in hindsight that you see that we know he's always present, but you look at a specific situation and you say, oh, that's why it went that way, or that's what was happening in that time. And so as Carrie's describing, he was there. She's probably more aware of him now as she looks back upon it, but it's something that we can learn from and be more aware of in the present rather than having to look back months later or years later in 1 Corinthians 9, Carrie, verse 24 says, Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize, run so as to win? It's a very popular passage when it comes to people talking about faith and sports together. But Carrie, the very next verse, verse 25 is one that I have to believe, even though this is just you and I meeting for the first time, I have to believe you are trying regularly to get student athletes to realize what I'm about to read in terms of life lessons, meaning you might not be reciting this verse to them, but I'm sure you're going to tell me that you aim to carry its message to the student athletes that you work with. It says, every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we, an imperishable one. Yes, I, you know, I love that these two are are paired together because um, as you were kind of leading into that, um, that scripture passage, the, my thought is that I have so much confidence that I don't need to do the translating for my athletes, um, how this is impacting them spiritually. Uh, and, and many of my athletes are not Catholic or, you know, not necessarily practicing. Some of them are, mm-hmm. they're all in different places in their faith journey. If they even know mm-hmm. they're journeying at all. <laughs> sure. Um, and so I have so much confidence that, that athletics is such an avenue for encounter with God that just pursuing the crown, you know, pursuing the championship, pursuing the win is a worthwhile endeavor. And I have the great privilege of making sure that that's grounded in truth and grounded in, you know, again, the human person and in, in what God wants for them more than the win. Um, but I think the athletes are learning you know, these aspects of the spiritual life that are, they're going to need at that point that, you know, God willing, they realize they're seeking him. Um, so exercising discipline in all things, um, you know, that's little things like, you know, my latest speech to them this week as we're, as the weather's changing and cold season is upon us is, are you getting to bed early? Are you, ma- you know, managing your time well so that you're not pulling all nighters on papers? Are you careful what you're, um, you know, putting into your body, are you careful about what, um, what different ways you need to recover? You know, you, you, they have a responsibility and they have an opportunity to set themselves up for success. Um, in our arena, you know, and the scripture points out, there's only one winner. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but that doesn't mean that everybody else who pursues that win, it doesn't mean that they lose. So I, you know, I, I think this is where I, I can't speak to, you know, how this scripture directly um, impacts that. All I know is that the pursuit is worthwhile. And that was a ch- turning point in my athletic career when I finally was able to let go of the need for success to validate my pursuit. Mm. When I was able to finally recognize that that wasn't the point, that's, that's the year I made the team. Um, the U.S. team, uh, and that was mm. the year that it probably mattered to me the least whether I made the team or not, because I finally understood that the pursuit was worthwhile. Amazing. So I, I just have so much confidence that the pursuit is worthwhile for my athletes that I'm I'm pushing them freely, and I'm not worried about if they fail. <laughs> I'm not worried about if they fail. I want them to win, of course. Sure. Um, but but I'm not afraid of their quote unquote failure because it, it because our you know our reap is imperishable <laughs> or you know what we're seeking is imperishable that's right um you know they they can't fail even if they in a worldly view fail wonderfully said wonderfully said final question you obviously have found an audience that responds well to you because not only are you on the front line with college student athletes every day but share with the audience about your involvement at your parish Oh, yes. So I am um, co-leading our young adult group um, at my local parish, and that has been 
such a gift in my life. It was um, pretty early on when I moved, you know, back to New York. I had been in D.C. prior. Uh, I moved back to New York, and I was looking to kind of put some roots down, and I um, was intentionally going to Mass at my local parish, and um, the pastor asked me if I would be interested in a young adult group, and I said, oh, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to meet people my age, and he said, would you start it? <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh. Well, if I'm going to say I would like to benefit from it, I should probably be willing to be involved in it. So um, another woman that I had recently met, and she and I have become very close friends um, you know, through this young adult group. We've um, been able to meet some really wonderful people and, and have some really um, good friendships come out of it. So, you know, God's been working in, in all sorts of different areas, and it's low-key. It's a monthly holy hour, and it's a, it's a bunch of us that, um, you know, see each other, know each other, friendly faces at Mass. And um, so I think it's just it's good to, to be involved in community. I think that's one thing that's really come out of this is, especially in New York City where I am, you can get, you have access to all sorts of different things and you can just kind of dabble in all sorts of things, but um, to really commit and to really um, invest in, in a, you know, the local community, that's been a real blessing for me. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, Carrie, God bless you. It's been so great having you on the show. I really enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate you making time to be on Catholic Sports Radio. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. I really, this was a great conversation. Thanks so much. Absolutely. And listeners, as a nod to Carrie as a coach, we will close this week's episode with a coach's prayer. We haven't done this one in quite some time, and we'll do it together, of course, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, guide me as I try to coach my team to build each player's character and boost their self-esteem. May I keep an even temper and remember it's a game. Let me not have favorite players, but treat them all the same. Grant me patient wisdom as I praise them or correct, remembering that I must work to earn each one's respect. Lord, whether we may win or lose, may all who are watching see the kind of coach at every game that you would have me be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. This is Catholic Sports Radio. Find more at catholicsportsradio.net, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Cath Sports Radio on all those, C-A-T-H, at Cath Sports Radio. I'm Bruce Wozniak, and remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's that it's Jesus that you always choose. 